In this presentation, we will create a backup file within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting open windows list. We're going to talk about creating a backup. When creating a backup file, we have a backup for a couple different reasons. One major reason we want the backup is so that we have support in case there's a problem with our company file. So if there's a problem, if our computer goes down or the hard drive goes down and we can't restore the file, we can't get to the actual QuickBooks file, we want to have the backup file so that we can restore our data. That means that we want to back up periodically. We would like to back up every time we leave the software or at least possibly every night or at least every week so that we have the data as up to a particular point in time. When we consider that type of backup file, note that we want to make sure that the backup file is somewhere other than where the data file is. In other words, saving a backup file in order to back up the system in the same folder that we have the data file wouldn't be very helpful. It might be a little helpful because the data file might be corrupted in some way, in which case we would have a backup file. So in that case, it would save us. But if the, if the hard drive that we had put the backup file on goes down, the entire hard drive, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the backup or the data file because they would be saved in the same location. So typically, we would want our backup file possibly in an external drive which you can do fairly easily by buying uh, an external drive, which would be a USB drive. And here are just some examples of external hard drives that you can find on Amazon. And the external hard drives you can sort by how much data you're going to have. So you don't need a whole lot of data in order to save a backup file, but if you wanna have multiple backup files, then you may need more data. You can look at these drives, you can type in uh, external hard drives here, and you'll have the hard drives that you can then track by the amount of data that can be sort stored on them. And typically the prices will change drastically depending on the amount of data. If you can get a hard drive that you think supports you uh, and get a few of them, then it's possible that you can save it to the hard drive and may possibly have different hard drives for each night of the week or some kind of system like that where you can have that system. The other thing you might want to think about is then removing <laughs> The hard drive from the lo same location so for example if there's a problem if there's a fire or something like that you might want to take a hard the hard drive home to each night so that it is in a different location than the file that is at work that's one thing to think about or you can do some of these backups into an online system so you can back the system up into the cloud and by doing that then you save the risk of if there's a fire and your house burns down and then both the hard drive in terms of where your company file is and the backup file would burn in the fire, but you'd have the information on the cloud. The cloud, of course, has a bit more risk in that now your data is on the cloud and it could possibly be compromised more uh, being on the cloud. So those are just some of the things to consider. If it's on the cloud, also, you're going to be paying uh, rent for the storage, basically. Most of the time, you're going to have to store it somewhere. And the question is, you know, what's going to be the cost of the storing on the cloud versus backing it up and saving it on the hard drive? And what's the ease of doing it? How easy is it to, to do the backups? Now, the backups within QuickBooks are, are pretty easy to do. Once you have the, the system set up, it's pretty easy to do. We just want to think first where you want to put the backup. Also note that the backups might be there to transfer data to someone else or just to test the files, which is a very common usage. So if you want to give the data to your CPA or something like that or accountant to then look over the data, then you can give the data. If we wanted to, instead of printing the reports for our tax preparation, provide the tax preparer with the backup file, then they can go in there and get any reports they need and look at the backup and supporting documentation as needed. So that's going to be a very common use for the backup file. And another reason we might want to have the backup file is just for learning purposes. We might want to try to say, what would happen if I did this <laughs> and have a static backup file, do the thing that we're kind of worried about and then see the result. And if it caused problems, then we could restore the backup file back to we where we were before we did 
that maneuver. So first thing, where do we want to put the backup file? So we have our information here and on the desktop and get great guitars. If I go into that file, then I'm going to put the backup files separate from where we have the restored files. So I'm going to put the backup files in this folder and have a designated backup file folder. And remember that that's going to be different than the restored folder. So this is the restored folder. You're going to want to know where the, where the actual file is too. And sometimes that's a little bit difficult because sometimes QuickBooks just puts it somewhere or you don't remember exactly where you put it originally and you're working on a file that you don't actually know where it is on the computer. So it's useful to, you know, to know where it is. And then, so in our case, it's here in the restored file. It's in section one. And you'll know it's, it's the actual file because it has a, a QB, it'll have a QBW. And if you wanted to open QuickBooks from a QBW file, the actual file, and you found it and you want to say, is that the one I've been working on? You can double click on it and it should open up QuickBooks from here just like you would with, say, a Word document. You can double click on this file and it should open up uh, QuickBooks and open up that data file. And then once this is open, this, this is the data file that we are working on here. Once we have this, once we locate it, then the backup file, I want somewhere different. I'm going to go back to this folder. I am going to put it in the same folder for our example purposes or in the same uh, hard drive, a different folder. I'm going to put it into the backup file here. So again, this isn't on a different drive or anything like that, which you would want to do if you're doing it for backup purposes. It's going to be an example. Uh, so we're going to put it into the backup folder in section one. This is where we're going to put it. So it's going to create an, a different file when we do the backup. We'll still have the QBW file and of course another file that will be a backup file if we wanted to use that backup file we would go through the restoration process as we've seen in prior presentations. Back to QuickBooks and the actual backup process. We're going to go to the file dropdown up top and we're going to go to the backup company. So we'll go to file dropdown backup company and we're going to create a local backup. So we're going to create a local backup file backup company local backup. And then we have these two options an online backup or a local backup. Ours is going to be local in that it's going to be on our drive. So if we're going to our computer, either an external drive or our actual C drive, the computer drive, then we're going to choose the local backup and say next. Then we're going to browse to locate where we want to put it. So we'll select the browse and it gives you this little drop down first. You're, you're going to have another Windows section later, but this is the same thing. It's a little bit more tricky uh, to navigate through this kind of drop down window that we have. It's really just mapped out in the same format as we would if we were going into each folder. It's just got the drop downs to, to extend each of the folders. So we're going to currently be on the desktop. We're on the desktop. We're looking for the Get Great Guitars file. So there it is. Now, if I select it, then that's selecting the file. I'm going to select this little drop down and then it'll open that file up. What's in that file? So these are the folders that are going to be within this file. We want ours in the backup file. So I'm going to select that little drop down. Here's the folder in the backup file. And then I want to select uh, section one. So I'm going to select section one. If I double click on it, I'm not going in there. That's just where it ends. So if I select OK, it's going to go into this folder. And that's what we'll do. We're going to say OK. We're going to keep the default settings. The default settings here says add the date and time of the backup to the file name. That's going to be really useful because the file name is going to be much the same other than the tape date and time. And that's what we want to know, the date and time, which will differentiate the file so that we can have multiple files uh, in there rather than it overwriting the same file. And we'll know which is the latest file that we have. And we also have this option to limit the number of backup copies in this folder. And that's useful too because we might say that we have this drive that only stores so many backup files. So we don't want like a hundred backup files in it. We may not, we may want more than three, but we want to make sure that we have some, it'll automatically delete some of the backup files. If we have more than a number, whatever number we set here, and that can be helpful to save time so that we're not backing up files and just uh, wasting data on the computer or storage space on the computer. Then we've got remind me to backup when I close my computer file every four times. So there's going to be a default message basically that pops up and says, hey, you haven't backed up the data. Do you want to? We recommend that you do so. And it'll only do that every four times you close it. So if that's useful to you, you can have there. If that's not a useful option, 
If you have a standard set routine and you're okay with that and you don't want to see that pop up, then you can turn that off. And then we have select an option to verify that your company data is okay, that it is uh, not corrupted when you save it. So I would say that we would want to complete verification and make sure it's not corrupted. So I'm going to say okay. And it gives me this pop up and it basically says, I'll paraphrase it here, it says, hey, your normal document is on the here as well. Your normal file, your QBW, your regular file is on the same C drive that you are putting the backup file to. This isn't efficient if you're trying to back up the information to save the data in case of damage to that C drive. And we're going to say, I know that that's okay. And possibly I'm not doing it for that purpose. Maybe, I'm, you know, maybe I'm saving it for my accountant or something like that. So I'm going to say, use this location. So that's a pop up just trying to help us out there. And we'll say save it now. We'll say next. Now it's going back to where we want to save it, where we want to save it on our computer. We've already done this. We did this with the little drop downs, but it does it again and it does it in a format that's a little bit more like we've probably used to seeing. In other words, if I choose this drop down up top, we chose to put it into the computer with those little arrows and then into get great guitars and then into the backup and then to the section one. And now it's, it's showing us that again. It's also here to show us the file name and the save as type, which will be a QBB document. So it's given that information again. So we're going to say that's all good. If we want to change the name, we could, but the default name is usually fine. This is, we'll just say, yeah, it's going to be the name of the company, get great guitars. And we've got the backup file with the date and timestamp. That's perfect. So that's usually all we need. We'll say save. And then it says QuickBooks has saved the backup of the company file to get great guitars to this location. And so we have the location. If you wanted to, to copy that or something or screenshot that to give it to someone else to know where the backup file is, you can do that. That'll give the mapping to where it is on the computer. Also note that if you had more than that minimum of three or four that it was in that particular folder, you would get a pop up here saying, hey, do you want us to delete uh, one of the backup files because you have more than three and we only need three backup files. And then if you say yes, it'll automatically delete the extra backup file. Now let's find it on the computer and see what it did. So if we go into the get great guitars, this is where we put it. And we go into this. Remember, this is our restored file. This is where we were working one from. And that's a it's a QBW file. I'm going to go back to the start. That file's still there. Didn't go away, of course. And then we're going to go to the backup file and section one. This is the new file that was created. So the new file that was created is a QBB file. You can see that it has uh, the backup date on it so that we can know the date and time. So if we had multiple backups, clearly normally we would want the latest backup that we would have. Also note that the backup files are pretty clean. We only have this one thing that's generated as opposed to when we created the normal file, it created all that other kind of file stuff with it. The backup files are typically pretty clean. Now note, if we just double click on this, we'll not open the file because it's a backup file. If we want to open this file, we need to restore it. When we do so, this file doesn't go away. It'll stay there and we'll create a new QBW file. So if I was to restore this, it would, this would still remain. We would make another QBW file. Now there are a couple more options within the backups for the way to set them up in the system to set up a backup system that are worth looking at and looking into. If we go back to the file tab in our system and we go back to the backup here and we create a local backup, same place we were at before. And we say we want to go to next, keep it on the local backup and we're going to go to next. Note that we can also have these two options here, which is to save up a backup now and schedule, schedule future backups, or we can just schedule future backups. So we want to set a set schedule instead of us manually uh, doing the backup, which really isn't a problem because then you can do it at the end of the day and do that backup once you do that uh, a few times. It's not that difficult of a process to do. However, you could set up the scheduled backup and say next, and then you have a few options, which is save backup uh, automatically when I close my computer. So that'll give you, every time you, you close the computer, it'll give you that, that option to back up. If you choose this option, then you have this item here. So if I select this, we've got this item here, which is going to change where you want to put it, where you want to browse 
and put uh, the backup files. You, you want to make sure that you know where they're going. So I'm going to close that back out and close this. Now that works good if you have an option where you're always going to the same location whenever you back up the file. If you're switching uh, hard drives and you're using a different hard drive, then, then it might be more tedious than it's worth because you're going to have to want to go back in here and make sure you know that it's going to the correct location. If you have one location and it deletes the excess backups after a certain point, then this could be a good system. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.